Hey everyone, my name is Judy from Happy Holistics and as a yoga instructor, my primary concern is always the safety of my students. The practice of yoga goes way beyond just the physical aspects that we are used to and that we know and love. And one of the things that I follow in order to live my yoga is following Pantanjali's Eight Limbs of Yoga. I'm way oversimplifying this, but for the sake of not releasing a whole bunch of five hour long videos, I'm going to explain the Yoga Sutras as kind of like a guideline on how to live. You may be most familiar with the asana practice or the physical aspect of yoga, and maybe you've even heard about the breathing or pranayama practice of the Yoga Sutras. However, the actual first part of the Yoga Sutras is called the Yamas, which are, I guess, the ethical guidelines that they offer. And the one that always comes up first, I guess most important, and the one that you should always pay attention to, is Ahimsa, or nonviolence. The way we can interpret this is to obviously not cause harm in another person. Some practitioners take this to the next level and avoid consuming meat products to avoid doing harm to animals. For this video, I'm going to be talking about doing no harm to our own bodies in terms of protecting the wrists as we practice. Because unfortunately, wrist injuries are one of the most common yoga injuries there are, along with back pain and hamstring injuries. In the future, I'll probably do a video talking about yoga injuries and my thoughts about them. But for today, we're just going to be focusing on our wrists. When your hands are on the ground, spread your fingers wide and create a bit of space between the knuckles and the floor. Gripping with your finger pads will distribute the weight more equally between both hands and all fingers so that the weight isn't all dumped into the wrists. If being on the palms like this is not comfortable, taking fists by curling your fingers inwards is suitable for some people and for some poses like cat and cow. I don't quite understand the physics of this variation and how it helps, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the angle in the wrist and or you're using different muscles. Because fists can be awkward in some transitions, I find that going into forearms suits more poses like downward dog and plank. You want to be careful not to dump the weight into your shoulders or elbows, same as when we don't want to dump our weight onto our wrists when we're on palms. We're going to be talking about that next. There are certain poses where you might feel an almost overwhelming downward energy that concentrates to one area of your body, and it could feel like you're carrying dead weight. Unless you find a way to use muscles from other parts of your body to find lift and disperse the weight, you could end up with aches, strains, and injuries. So using downward dog as an example, it's very easy to sink down. From here, see if you can activate the muscles to create a little bit more space between your forearms and the floor by lifting up. Building on that, the more evenly you can distribute your entire body weight, the easier it is to relieve the pressure from your wrists. So the positions of your heels in down dog can also affect the way you experience this pose. When the heels are up, energy transfers forward to dump into the wrists. When you move the heels towards the ground, even if you have to bend your knees, it'll shift your weight into the bigger leg muscles and be less strain on your wrists. For another way to explore this idea, try shifting the heels forward in plank. All of the weight dumps into your wrists. When you press the heels of your feet back as if you are trying to touch the heels to the back wall, you should feel the weight better supported by your larger leg muscles and core and as a happy side effect, some pressure will be alleviated from your arms. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week. For more information about yoga, nutrition, and holistic living, please visit my website at www.happyholistics.ca.